I'm going to show you how to use the auto binding feature in Bubble. If you're not familiar with what auto binding does, it lets you modify a record in your database without having to create a workflow event for it. So for example, I'm currently logged in as this user here, George Washington. So I have a text element that shows my first and last name and an image element that shows my profile picture. I've also got some inputs here on the side that lets me modify these things. So if I were to change uh, this guy's name to Alex Hamilton. Okay, you can see that the name was automatically updated. If you caught it, the progress bar moved across the screen there, indicating that there was uh, database work being done. And I didn't have to click a button to trigger this workflow. In fact, I didn't even have to create an event at all for it. So how did I get this to happen? How did I update the database automatically as soon as that input, both of these inputs actually, were changed? Well, the feature is here. If I select uh, one of these inputs here, you can see that I have this option here checked off. Enable auto binding on parent elements thing. Okay, so what that means is that anytime you change the value of an input, um, and this can be a, a, like a regular type in input, it can be a photo uploader, it can be a checkbox radio button, basically anything found within your input form elements here. Um, these will all have the auto binding feature available to you. Anytime you update that value, uh, it will automatically make a change to the parent elements thing. So that's kind of a requirement that you need. Otherwise, it's not gonna know um, what this input should be bound to. So if you notice, these three input elements here are inside of a group that is set to type user and the source is the current user. So whenever I change the value of any of these inputs, it's gonna, they're, they're bound to the current user record. If I change this data source to a different user, it would be bound to that user, okay? So you have to have a parent element thing um, in order for this to really work. Otherwise, Bubble wouldn't know what to change. Um, if this input was outside of that group, then the parent element is now the page. So if your page has a content type set, let me go to the property editor for it. Currently, this one doesn't. So right now, it wouldn't be able, you wouldn't have, um, you see how I have this warning message here, the parent element and the page have no type. It's not modifiable, so you can click here to edit it. This is actually very handy, so you know Bubble will help you out a little bit. It'll take you exactly where you need to go to make that change. You wanna set the page type to have a content of some kind. So if I set it to user, now we can select a, a user field to modify for this input itself. If I change this to another one of my types, like category, then I have uh, other fields for that category type to work with, so I could select a name. Now, we have a couple other things to keep in mind too. Let me back up a little bit though. Let me go back to put this back in my group here. Now, a major component to setting up auto binding is that you have to have a privacy role created for that specific field. So if I go into my data tab and then my privacy sub tab here, and I've navigated to the user data type because that's ultimately what I'm working with with these fields in particular. I'm talking about a user thing. Uh, so if I go into the user data type for this privacy section, I must create um, a permission role that allows auto binding for those specific fields. And this, you don't have to have roles where some people can and cannot. That really depends on what you want your app to do. But you have to turn this on um, to enable it in any way. So whether I have everyone able to do auto binding or just some people, that's up to you. Currently, I have a data role here for when the current user is logged in. And I have allow auto binding checked. And then I only have a couple of these fields selected. So you can actually choose. Not all fields for uh, you know, the user record necessarily need to enable auto binding. You can select only the ones that you need. So I've got last name, first name, and profile picture. And for everyone else, I can leave this unchecked. What would happen if I were not logged in and I tried to update these fields is that I would get an error message. It would say, sorry, you do not have permission to modify this. Um, so that's you know, the, the fact that this um, privacy role thing is required for auto binding gives you a little extra security or automatically having to ensure uh, access to data. Um, but that's what would happen if somebody were to try to auto bind something or trigger an auto bound input 
um, but they were outside of the permission role. Now, if you meant to have something auto-bound, but you know, maybe you forgot to check this little box, Bubble's gonna let you know. Um, so if I go to this last name input here, it'll tell me that I do not have any privacy roles selected for this particular field. And you can actually click this message and it'll take you right to it. So you can see that the checkbox here is unchecked. If I check that now, that message should go away and I'm all good to go. One last little feature that goes along with auto binding is this show an alert on success. So because you don't have a workflow tied to the auto binding action, uh, Bubble has also added the ability to show an alert message just so that the user gets a little extra feedback, letting them know that uh, they did something and it affected the database. So you can check this. And once you do, let's see, I don't have any alerts on my page here. If I create an alert real quick here. And I go to one of my inputs, show an alert. So now that I have an alert on the page, I have extra options for selecting which alert I want to use. Um, and I can change the alert message if I'd like. So that way this will show as soon as the auto bound action is complete. Right, so that's all you need to know to set up auto binding. Um, the, the important parts are that Inputs need to have a parent element thing, otherwise Bubble wouldn't know what to bind the value to. Um, you need to select the field as well, and that will show up as soon as you check this box. And you must create a privacy role for that as well. Okay, you have to have allow auto binding checked, and then the field also checked, the ones that you want to work with. This is actually a really handy feature because your users can get an immediate response um, and change to the database as they're filling out fields or making selections with other input elements. It might not be right for everyone if the data you're working with is sensitive and you want to make sure that your users are double checking their work and they're not you know, entering in mistakes or typos into the inputs. Probably better off to give them a button to trigger and have workflows uh, updating your database in those cases. But if it's something like this where maybe a user is working with their own user profile, giving them the ability to quickly update their own information, uh, this is a, it's a great use case for auto binding. Plus, it's less workflows for you to create and manage as well. If you like this tutorial, please leave a comment below, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love doing this kind of stuff. Let me know what else you're interested in learning. And thanks so much for watching.